Good morning, everybody. Welcome to University of Atlantia. And we are here to give you a wonderful class today called Courting Technology. And what uh, Marguerite and I have put together is some things to help you learn how to use Zoom live streaming with YouTube and Facebook, and then also a huge array of additional uh, hardware and software that can allow you to make really customized views of what you see in that Zoom so that you can bring in all sorts of different pieces from either in the room that you're in or uh, elsewhere uh, to make it really beautiful and customized. So in this age of bringing the SCA to online, we're learning all sorts of new stuff. Uh, and Marguerite and I have had the honor and excitement and thrills of being able to work with the Kingdom of Atlantia's uh, court system. So we've been producing some royal courts and it's been a wonderful experience learning how to bring this stuff to life while we're still all stuck at home. So my name's Sophie and I'm the University Deputy for Online Learning. And I do a lot of this stuff in my day job. I teach people how to use online tools for collaboration. Uh, that's my day job and I love doing it. So I could really just talk all day at you. Uh, but right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sharing my screen and get into my slides. I'm gonna cover the first part. And uh, I'm probably gonna take not even a half of the time. I'm gonna take maybe a third of the time. And then Marguerite is gonna fill it up with all sorts of other amazing, gorgeous things. So, and before, uh, we, before we jump into your slideshow, if I may. Go ahead, go ahead um, Marguerite. Let me better. introduce myself real quick. My name is Marguerite Honoré Duchesneau. Um, I am, uh, I'm actually the Seneschal of Storvik, which is how I got into doing some of this video stuff for SCA. Um, but mundanely, previous to, previously to this, I was uh, the new media specialist for the Select Committee on Energy Independence and Global Warming. That's House of Representatives. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I'm also a, a theater maker, an actor, an artist. And so I come at this from a um, how do you want a little bit of a production aspect? How do you make this a production? What are the things that we can borrow from theater to make the flow a little bit better? And then also the technical, how do you add in all the cool new bells and whistles to make stuff look look and sound really, really cool? And I tell you, uh, Marguerite and I did not know each other before this. And <laughs> we have really enjoyed having theater geekery between us and also some understanding of technology. So. This is a really great time. We're having a lot of fun. So here comes the screen share. There we have it. Hopefully everybody is seeing my pretty orange slides. And the first page says courting technology part one. All right. I Marguerite? am not seeing slides. I'm just seeing something saying that you're starting screen share. You started screen sharing. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. I right. do see the slides though. Yeah. Well, then maybe it's yep. me. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. So, so do the slides say courting technology part one? All right. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, guys. Super. So, one of the other fun things that I started doing this quarantine is putting together comedy improv shows for the sake of having fun and just fighting anxiety. <laughs> and um, I found that live streaming those shows was great practice in getting under my fingers uh, what are the what's the process necessary to take my friends gathering together in a zoom doing silly fun things with each other and telling jokes and being improv uh, comedians and then sending that out into the universe we did it both on facebook and on youtube so uh, i'm going to talk from that point of view where we've got some people coming into zoom and um sending that out into the universe. So here we go. We are going to cover setting up Zoom. There's a few things you've got to do to click the right buttons on Zoom. And then we're going to cover streaming to Facebook and streaming to YouTube. And then Marguerite is going to show you amazing things about what you can do to make that feed from Zoom into something customized. So setting up your Zoom, you are going to need to have <clears throat> have one of those paid accounts. You're going to need the desktop application. So you're going to be absolutely certain to download that Zoom application onto your computer. You cannot do it through just the browser. And then you're going to need the host role instead of being a participant or a co-host. 
So it's um, it's actually a little bit difficult to show you a Zoom within a Zoom. So what I'm showing you here are some screenshots. This is a pretty easy uh, setup, but you got to know where the buttons are. Uh, so the screen sharing there you see is my fuzzy kitty cat. So he's the participant that stood still for the sake of taking screenshots. If you look in the bottom left corner of your screen, there's a little button that says um, video. And then there is a little upward carrot button that pops up a menu. That menu has a little option that says video settings. Video settings is the one that you need to open up this menu here that has my bookshelves showing in a picture. You're gonna see on the left-hand side, a bunch of options. You want video to be showing. And then this is the option I'm going to suggest you use, which is hide non-video participants. This is gonna mean that you don't have uh, like just a name showing up and uh, you can uh, you can allow people to just not be seen if they don't want to be seen. So that's a little setting I recommend. Now there's another one. You see, we've got my good friend Marvin, the orange eyeball puppet, and the kitty cat having a conference. In the upper right hand corner of the cat's view, you see this little button with three dots that pops down this menu here. And one of the things you can do with these two is to pin, uh, pin one of the one or a few of the uh, participants. Now keep in mind that if you pin something that's just for yourself, there's another option called spotlight where you can spotlight a single or a few of these views of these people for everyone. So those are two different things to keep in mind and you can use them however you see fit. Now here's the one that surprised me and I had to learn the hard way. Um, here in Zoom, uh, uh, here in Zoom, you've got in the back end, this is not your personal view of uh, what's going on in the room. This is in your back end in your account. You're going to have this menu in the left hand side pretty easy to see most of the time when you log in. Go to settings and then you're going to see in the top section here this area of settings says in meeting advanced. You can click on that. It's actually just a shortcut. I'm muted and I'm not. And uh, this section here allow live streaming of meetings. You're going to have to go down to that. It's really far down. So scroll, scroll, scroll. Do not lose hope. It's there. I promise. And this little toggle switch, you have to toggle on. And then these are the options you get. So I'm gonna pause there to see if everybody's following me because this is the <laughs> you've got to set in order to make live streaming possible on your Zoom. This is okay. the teacher. So how are you doing? Can I get a couple of thumbs up? All right, thanks, Maggie. Awesome, beautiful. Okay, be sure to mute yourself, folks. Thanks, Ellen. I appreciate the thumbs up. That's awesome. It's 10. All right, so these four, you have the option of checking them or not checking them. I suggest you check all of them. No. And we're going to explore those in a second. Okay. Now, I am hearing some background noise from somebody. I want to make sure that everybody knows you can mute I muted them. Okay, and Marguerite will do it for you. <laughs> awesome. Now, look, live streaming to Facebook is really easy. It is so easy that we're starting with that. And this is how I started with my little comedy improv troupe. They make it really super easy. The only limitation you've got is that in order for people to see your show, they have to log into Facebook. And there is a you know, population of people out there that do not have Facebook accounts. That's a perfectly valid lifestyle choice. <laughs> and so I'm gonna tell you, it's great for small things. Not so good for SCA life because we really want that to be open to absolutely anybody, regardless of whatever accounts they have. So it can be made public, but that's different from making it um, outside of Facebook public. So I do recommend you start with this. It's a great, easy starting area for, um, uh, for uh, when you're new. So when you get to your Zoom, you're gonna see this more button with three dots. This pops open your live streaming menu that you just activated in the back end. 
It's so simple. You hit this and then you hit live on Facebook. And this little menu here will pop up, go live on Facebook. And then it says, choose where do you want to post your live video? Most of the time I posted it to my own personal news feed. You can send it into a group. So let's say you're doing uh, some sort of, uh, uh, let's say a uh, puppet festival fun thing. And so all your puppet fans are part of a group and you can send your puppet show into that group uh, on Facebook. And then this little menu will come up. It says live producer at the top, you got your name. If you hit only me, <laughs> that means you're the only one that's gonna see it. So make sure this is set to something that's public or members of the group. And where the word demo is, you see here, this is your title and your description. So type in something there. And then the bottom uh, button there says go live. And voila, you're there, you're live, projecting to the people and they will be able to make comments and you can have your puppet show and it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, that is all you need to do for Facebook. Any questions? Or are we all feeling really confident in how easy that is? Yes, okay. Alrighty, if you have questions, feel free to uh, interrupt me. Uh, all right, moving on. Next thing we're gonna do is YouTube. Now this is gonna be a little easier to share within, um, within a Zoom. So I'm gonna show you some slides and then I'm gonna give you a live demo. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to take notes as you go. And then I highly encourage you to practice. It's okay if you put a live stream of you just sitting there at your desk going like this into the camera. Uh, it's perfectly fine to do that. And then you can delete it later. Go ahead and practice. Practice is important. So first thing is you got to log in to your Google account and Google has your a YouTube in the little applications launcher. I'll show you that in a minute. You're going to want to look for this little icon next to my number one here. This icon of the little camera with a plus sign, he is going to give you this double two option menu here, upload video and go live. You wanna select go live. Then what will pop up is what's under number two here, schedule stream. And this is for scheduling your live stream ahead of time, which I highly recommend. You can technically do it instantly if you want, uh, but I suggest scheduling it ahead of time and then setting up your Zoom and sending it in. So schedule stream will give you this menu that's under my number three, where you have to give it a title, say if you want it public or not. Now public means it goes out into the entire word, world, the whole dirty internet, everybody out there will get to see you. And that's great if you're doing a silly improv show or you're doing puppets or something. If you want it to be private, you can set it to be private, but then you're gonna need to have all of the Gmail addresses for everybody that wants to watch you and you have to manage a list of people. That's cool if that's what you wanna do. That would be set right here where it says public. So choose whether it's gonna be public or private. And then add a description. You've got some um, categories here. It says people and blogs. Choose whatever kind of category you think fits. Uh, and then set up your date and time. You've got an option for upload custom thumbnail. That's actually really useful because if it's just your face showing up on a bunch of live streams, that doesn't really help the user figure out what they're gonna watch. So if you have any kind of graphic that you can upload to show the thumbnail, that will help the users understand they're in the right place for what they wanna see. Uh, and then this thing for, yes, it's made for kids. No, it's not made for kids. I would recommend choosing, no, it's not made for kids. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna be talking about mortgages and balancing your book and boring adult stuff. It does mean that when you click, yes, it's made for kids, it is actually within YouTube marketed to kid channels. And it, you know, it's just, it just is not really a good fit for anything I've done, um, regardless of my proficient use of puppets. Um, and so I would recommend just sticking to no, it's not made for kids. That's gonna be your regular um, stuff that Skadians do. Now, if you are looking to market to kids, go ahead and do that. Yes, it's made for kids is gonna be for you, but that's a rare case in this audience. Um, now, once you hit create stream, you're gonna see a bunch of um, uh, you're going to see a bunch of options. There are three uh, three technical links that I'm going to show you that are key to setting up the the connection 
between YouTube and your Zoom. So this section here, get three pieces from YouTube for Zoom. YouTube will provide them. You need to plug them in to Zoom. It's gonna be your streaming URL. This is the input, the streaming key, just a password. And then the live streaming page, the output, that's gonna be the link that you publish to the great big world showing everybody what link to click, click on as a user to come see your show. We're gonna talk about those three pieces a lot. All right, so here we are. When, you, um, when you're in Zoom, you remember this menu, you've got the more, and then you're gonna actually, I recommend don't hit live on YouTube. I know it sounds like that should be the thing. It's actually live on custom streaming service. That gives you more options. So live on YouTube's okay. That really means it's just gonna be your Zoom account straight into your YouTube account and there's no options for where else to put it. For the Atlantia, for the Atlantia Kingdom Courts, what we've done is this live on custom live streaming service because that allows a handful of, handful of us on the team to be streaming straight into the kingdom owned YouTube account so that we don't have to own it. It's the kingdoms. And that's what the custom live streaming service allows us the option to do. So I'm gonna keep going with live on custom live streaming service. If you wanna try live, try live on YouTube, that's gonna be just your account to your account and there's nowhere else you can send it. Um, now, this is the menu for the three pieces I mentioned that are really important. Your streaming URL, your streaming key, and the live streaming page URL. This box here is from Zoom. Zoom is asking for this information. You're going to get it from YouTube and put it in here. And this is what it looks like. YouTube, this black box is what shows up on YouTube. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of stuff in here, but the numbers one, two, and three are going to hopefully show you where the mix and match goes. Down here at number one, this is your streaming URL. It's hard to see here, but I'm going to show you in the live demo in a second. That's your URL. You just copy paste, copy this link into this blank. Same with number two, your streaming key. Streaming key is just a password. Stream key is one of these, I think it's this one with the dots. Uh, you can see the little eyeball there to uh, actually see the numbers and letters if you want to. Copy paste from there into, from the black one into the white one. And then with number three, the same uh, similar thing, but you go to a different place for it. Three is the uh, external URL. If you go to the three up here, you see this little arrow, this tiny little arrow is gonna pop open a menu that just has that one URL in it. Copy that, paste it into here, into Zoom. And then your big blue button that says go live, go ahead and hit it. There will be a bit of a delay. It is awkward and a little tricky to figure out how, the, how many seconds is going by. And so what I highly recommend is you practice clicking the button and counting for yourself, how many seconds go by and what it looks like. I've tried to communicate that to other people and the best thing I can say is there's a delay. It might be anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds. And in order to get the feel of what you need to do while you're waiting for it to go live so that you can sit there looking like you're about to perform but you're not actually giving any lines that are gonna be missed, go ahead and practice that. That's important, all right? Here's our live demo coming up. And I see a right. hand raised from HR and Martin Trimeris. Thank you, Your Majesty. Welcome for joining us. What can we do to help? Uh, I just a quick question to clarify what you just said. Um, you mentioned the lag from the time you press the button to the time it goes out. Is that lag? Um, I mean, in other words, once you press the button, is it going to pick it up? It just won't transmit for X number of seconds, or it won't, um, you know, the, the time between the time you press the button and the time it starts going out is simply lost video. Actually, sir, both things happen. And so <laughs> okay. that's, yeah, both. Isn't that great? So um, what, I, what I have experienced myself 
is I hit that button and then I start talking and I say, hi, this is Sophie. I'm here to give you the show today. And, la, 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 la. and I have a second computer actually off on the side that is my pretend user where it's not logged into anything. It's just a user watching the show. And I can tell that there's some sort of delay of maybe about 10 seconds that is between when I hit that button and when my words start coming through. But then there's also a delay between the time I'm actually saying something and those words get through to the user. So both happen and I'm gonna recommend that really the, the important thing you do is practice it. So you know, follow this process and give it a practice run for you know, a couple of times as you're doing this through your own YouTube. And um, you'll see what I mean. I highly recommend you have something like pretty background harp music to just sort of let sit there until you see that the flow is happening and your um, uh, and your lag has gone through. How does that sound? Excellent, thank you. All right, super. Thank you, Your Majesty. And if you're curious about technically why those things happen, poke me during my section. Oh yes, I will gladly pass the baton to you for that one, honey. All right, so let's see. Um, are we? Sh I'm not sharing right now. Um, I would love to um, share. Okay, I'm gonna have to reshare, I think. Maybe resume the share. Uh, oh, okay, I was sharing my document instead of my screen. Give me a couple seconds. Come on, come on, cursor. There we go. Okay, screen sharing has stopped. I'm gonna reshare my desktop. There we go. Actually, while she is getting that, can never mind, she's back. Good. All right. So is everybody seeing uh, all of my personal email? That would be just fine. I mean, yep. my life's an open book. There's nothing yes. crazy. <laughs> it's just a bunch of New York Times. Uh, so my friends, this is your regular average Gmail account. And the little nine box grid in the corner is your Google apps. This is a launching button that gives you all sorts of good fun uh, Google applications that you can play with. Go straight to YouTube. Do not press go. Uh, this is going to give you all sorts of fun things to play with. And we're going to go to, uh, uh, here it is. You remember this button I showed you in the screenshots? This little camera guy, hit create and then go live. Here we have it. This should look a little familiar once it fully, fully renders. Here we go. Now I'm gonna click this button, schedule stream. Hopefully that looks familiar from my slides. And no, I do not wanna use this old thing. That was 12th night, that was forever ago. Create a new one. There we go, this looks, this looks good. Demo one, keep it public. Demonstration for only. And we can say, you know, the time is happening right now. Uh, I'm not going to upload a custom thumbnail, but I am still recommending that you do it. And no, this is not made for kids. We're being perfectly grown up here. And we're going to talk about mortgages and balancing your checkbook. All right, create stream. There we have it. Um, uh, don't worry too much about this yellow uh, warning. It just means that I need to reset my stream key if I want to. Um, make the stream happen right away. So this might come up in the future for you. Stream key might need to be reset. This little button here uh, resets your stream key. So those three little pieces that I said before, you're gonna want to claim from YouTube and put in your Zoom when your Zoom is running for live streaming, they are right here. Here is your stream URL right there copy and paste that stream key right here. This is what you want to copy and paste in the slot number two, and then go up to the right, this little arrow here, this is what gives you the share link right here, this guy, the share link for your YouTube that goes out into the world. So this both is what goes into Zoom for you to send uh, what's going on in your Zoom out into YouTube. Also, this is the link you want to share with your friends and family 
and anybody that uh, you want to see the video. So this is gonna be that, uh, uh, what you put in your social media posts and your emails and your carrier pigeons and everything that goes out into the world, uh, use this right here. Alrighty, so my friends, that is actually my material for today. This should set you up with the Zoom and the Facebook or YouTube uh, settings that you need to take what's happening in your Zoom and send it out into the world. So I'm gonna pause here for a couple seconds for questions, and then we're gonna take a deep breath and dive into the world of Marguerite. So anybody have questions about setting that up? All right, your majesty, go right ahead. Uh, pardon the, the dumb questions. They're um, not dumb at all, this is all new. Totally new. No such down. thing. <laughs> Come on down. For uh, for what you just did with the stream key and the, and the URL and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, are those, I mean, once you get those, are they the same for every stream you're ever going to do, or are they different for each scheduled stream? Great question. They're different for every single one. Okay. Thank you for that. That was a good question. Thank you. Not even close to stupid. <laughs> so, well done. Yeah, the excellent. Now, one thing you'll notice, <clears throat> the stream key might be the same password if you set up a bunch of streams all at the same time. We had that happen with the uh, Kingdom account, uh, our web minister, Melchior, which we love. We love Mel. Hi, Mel. Um, this, uh, this got, he set up a bunch of streams for future courts when there were like four or five of them he was scheduling. That stream key did expire for some of them later, so we had to just reset it. If you ever have trouble, just hit reset. No problem. All right, that's a good question, Your Majesty. Thank you. Good one. All right, Moggy, go ahead. <clears throat> okay, so if, for instance, you're giving a concert mm -hmm. and you have a specific mix of the sound, you want the guitar of the vocals here in the stereo image, the guitar a little off to the side, the recorder over here. If you're putting out a stereo mix and that's coming from your mixer into your digital interface, does this preserve that mix? Because Facebook has, or not Facebook, um, Google Play would not accept the input from my interface and uh, um, Zoom used to be funny about a stereo mix. Yeah, I think the answer I'll, is no, but Marguerite yeah, knows more. <laughs> I'll, I'll chime in on that one. I would assume no. There may be some services that let you get that level of, um, of control, but I think you are going to have better results with some of the techniques that I'm talking about. Basically think that you're going to want to get all of your mixing done and you're going to be putting it out as essentially mono um uh but you can control the different levels and volumes of those different pieces coming in using some of the techniques that i'm going to be talking about so that what gets sent out uh works for uh uh what you're doing that being said this is an area that i haven't explored as much so you may find um uh additional resources if you look for how to do concerts online uh, uh see if someone has started to explore some of that and we can talk later about about how you could find some of those resources Thank you. Brilliant. Great question, Moggy. Thank you. Uh, and so, my friends, I am going to stop the screen share and take this imaginary baton right here and hand it to my friend Marguerite. There you go. And uh, Baton passed. <laughs> I'm going to still hang out. I'll be here. And uh, Marguerite, thank you so much for uh, showing us more cool stuff that you can do once you get into Zoom. Absolutely. So, You've got your stuff streaming into Zoom. First thing I wanna do is switch to this view. This is part of what you can do. All right, uh, I am going to spotlight my video because I kind of hate, uh, uh, there we go. So I'm now spotlighted. I should be the biggest video that you can see. This is another way to focus on a specific video is sort of what, what Sophia was talking about. And here's my slideshow. Um, you should, can everyone see Courting Technology Part 2 on the screen? Just to make sure, I see thumbs up. Great. 
So here's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this class. Um, we're going to run through the basic technical setups for a live stream. Um, we're going to talk about how you can elevate the different pieces of that setup using either hardware or software. We'll pause for questions and take a quick break because it is a long class. Um, then we'll be talking about how do you plan and rehearse a live stream? What are the steps that you're going to set up in the room? Just sort of a run through of what Sophia and I do pretty much every time we've done these. And finally, we'll wrap up, talk about some resources, and we'll have even more time for questions and discussion. And if you guys have questions during it, feel free to kind of unmic and uh, uh, clear your throat, make a noise, grab my attention. I tend to go a bit like a steamroller in some of these things, so don't be afraid to like pull the brake and stop me if you're confused or just want to ask something. Um, so first off, let's go through some terms just so that we're all on the same page. Zoom host or Zoom herald, that's Sophia. That's the technical staffer who is in the Zoom room. She is controlling the stream start and stop, just like she told you already. She decides which video feed is going to be in focus. And for courts where you have potentially, um, when we're doing elevations, we'll have someone call in from a, a remote location who uh, is being elevated or who is speaking on behalf of the person who is being elevated. Um, I'm going to call those offsite talent and the Zoom host is responsible for wrangling them for being a little bit of a, a friendly face to them. Um, the room host or the room herald or the stage manager, that's me. Um, this is the technical staffer who is in the theater, who's in the in-person location. They're controlling the camera and the microphone bare minimum. Um, and then in more complex setups, like the ones that, that Sophia and I have been using, um, they're also going to control other elements. So videos, things that play, um, changing between different cameras, all of that sort of stuff. Talent, I'm going to use that to refer to the people who are on screen. It, there are many ways you can refer to them, their majesties. It, talent is quicker and easier. Um, Anyone who appears on screen. Elizabeth, could you stop screen sharing, please? If you did not intend to. Thank you. I'm going to turn off screen sharing for non-participants just to keep that from happening. Um, cool. Next up, we've got um, in the theater or in room. These are the things that are happening in the physical space. Um, this could be a theater, it could be a hall, it could be someone's backyard. This is just sort of where that mainstream is coming from. Remote is anything happening in the Zoom room. And then finally, pre-recorded or prepared is going to be any pieces of content that were recorded in advance and um, are playing during the event. Uh, uh, things like for courts, we'll do a slideshow of the scrolls that have been presented. So those will be set up as a video, which we play. Or if there is someone who needs to speak during the event and they can't be there live, we'll have a video of them. Um, we'll talk more about what, what should be recorded and what should be live later. Um, and if you have questions on thoughts on that, I have many thoughts. So every setup you're doing, doesn't matter what you're doing. It has three elements that you need to think about. You have a video feed, you have the audio feed and you have your internet connection. Those are the three things that you need. Those are the three things that you can upgrade in various ways to improve your stream. We've all got a device that does that probably. Most of us probably do. It's a cell phone. I've got one too. It's right here. This can live stream. This can send your signal into Zoom and get you there. It's not great. The camera quality isn't always good. The picture's small. But this will do in a pinch and it has wireless, it has internet baked in. So don't forget that as an option. Slightly more stepped up option. Your laptop. A laptop that has a camera and a microphone in it, you'll have to connect to internet in some way. But you can set that up on a table in a room, point the camera at the speakers and have a court. Uh, we had a court that was held in, I think, a veterinarian's office, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that was run in this exact way. And especially if you don't have someone 
who is technical in the room or you just don't have the bandwidth to take care of doing other things, this is a really great simple option. So don't discount simple options in doing this kind of stuff. You don't have to go fancy. But if you want to, let's step it up to the next level. This is going to be a single, single camera microphone, a single camera and single microphone setup. So you've got over here, you've got your pointy hats, your, your talent, your people on screen. You've got one microphone somewhere near them. You've got a camera that is pointing at them that probably doesn't move. It might, but when cameras move while someone is watching it, it it's rough. It's hard. If you look at, uh, uh, if you ever watch sports, uh, uh, sports shows and you catch a, a glimpse of the, the cameramen that are actually doing physical moves with cameras, they have these gigantic setups to make everything super smooth and clean and pleasant to watch. You're not going to get there unless you want to invest in equipment that you probably don't need. So if you've got one camera, probably best to keep it stationary. Um, you've got a laptop, which is running Zoom. It is talking to the internet in some form or other, which is then talking to Sophia in the Zoom room. She might have a silent herald. She might have some Zoom participants in the room. And then from there, just as she talked through you already, uh, she is streaming out to YouTube, to Twitch, to Facebook, to wherever it needs to go. Many options there. So let's talk about how you could upgrade from that. Actually, first of all, does that basic setup make sense? Does anyone have any questions about this? Awesome, cool. Then let's talk about some upgrades. First thing you can upgrade, connectivity. And this one is easy to forget or to brush off or to think it doesn't matter. It does. If you don't have a good internet connection, it doesn't matter how beautiful your camera setup is because Zoom is going to have to compress the signal so much to get it out to the internet that it's going to look crappy no matter what you're doing or shoddy, pardon my language. Um, so things that you can do to improve connectivity. If you have the ability to, to connect to your modem through, a, through the ethernet, through a, a hardwired cable, it's that um, kind of square looking thing with a tab on it, do it. Hard lines will always give you better signal than Wi-Fi. I can't imagine a scenario where you will get less good signal by using Wi-Fi over hard line. Um, it can be very tricky. It may be that your setup doesn't allow this. Most don't. But if it is an option, hard line in. Wi-Fi is going to be your second best option. Now, when you're setting up a Wi-Fi system, distance and obstacles matter. Ideally, perfect world, you've got a straight line of sight between your Wi-Fi hub and your computer. Um, I don't have that in my house. It works fine. But again, this is how you could potentially optimize what you're doing. Um, third option, mobile hotspot. Looks like this. They are really great as a backup if you are able to invest in it or if you have one from work or something like that. Um, if you have one for, if you have a dedicated device like this one, it is probably a better option to using your phone. I have not had success pairing my phone to my computer and getting good signal off of it. So something to keep in mind, if you are using a phone as a backup, make sure that you have tested it. And, and this is a, a statement I'm going to make across the board is test everything. Test, rehearse, test again, test. It, it is your friend. It will save you so much stress down the road. And a stream that doesn't have those moments of, wait, how do I do this thing, instantly feels more professional, more put together. The people watching feel that they can trust you and trust what's going on, and they don't worry about you which means they can enjoy the show. You don't want your audience to be worried if you're okay. Um, now there's a final option. If you don't have decent internet where you're working, where this stream is happening, you don't have to do it live. You can record the stream, you can broadcast it later with a few exceptions to things that um, there may be some uh, uh, 
if unless there is something in your kingdom rules that requires it to be live um or or in a variance that you've gotten that you believe says this really does need to be live um a lot of pieces can be done virtually it takes a huge amount of stress off when all you have to do to run the the stream is click go and know exactly what's going to go out so it's something to keep in mind now we've talked about connectivity let's look at audio upgrades for audio first off you can use an external microphone i've got one it's right there it's kind of hard to see because it's black but microphone right so external microphone great option um some different choices that you have you can get a usb one which plugs straight into your computer this is probably the simplest option unless you want to go in for a mixer um you can also get what's called an xlr it's a different kind of plug um actually if you look at moggy very closely i believe he's got an xlr on the bottom of his microphone yep so it's round and it has some prongs coming out of it looks like that this is what uh professional audio systems will be using so yep exactly so you can get it you are trading some simpleness to plug into your computer for a certain level of control um there will be more options out there for microphones they may be cheaper as well because they're not being marketed to consumers they're being marketed to professionals um but you may also need more equipment to be able to mix the sound that comes out of it and get it into your computer elizabeth i see you have a question not so much a question but this was one of the things that i had to deal with um there are cheaper options than some of your plug and play uh, microphones mm -hmm. um one of the things that you need to make sure especially if you're connecting to a pc tablet whatever is to make sure you have the right jack for your mic yep. Uh, because current modern headphones <laughs> don't necessarily talk to older PCs and laptops. So yep. just wanted to put that out there. Um, I can include a link of what I bought for my setup. Um, there were some very inexpensive options for those that oh, are yeah. to upgrade, but not break the bank. <laughs> exactly. And that's true pretty much across the board on a lot of these things. Um, there are very expensive options out there but there's also relatively cheap ones too. And again, I'm gonna stress this many times, practice, practice, practice. If you are doing one of these with new equipment that you haven't done before, um, you don't wanna be trying to figure out if you have the connectors that work the week before your stream. Because Amazon can take two to three days to deliver something and then you have to test it. And if it doesn't work, you might have to order something else. And that, right there you've got more than a week to get the thing working and if you have to rinse wash and repeat several times you see where i'm getting uh, i would also i would also like to add that the, yeah. in, in going with that whole testing thing my problem mm -hmm. that i had was the microphone for my webcam was not good it was not yep. picking up and neither was my phone my phone was having trouble connecting with the facebook interface or something yep um, which made me go to an external mic. So testing. Bingo. Testing everything <laughs> as close to production uh, uh, setup as possible, testing everything. Um, now, for any of these options, if you're using an external microphone, invest in a long cord because you don't necessarily know what the space will look like and you want to get that microphone as close to the speakers as possible so that you can get as much of their sound and as little of the rest of the sound as possible, um, which means you need a long cord. It helps. I thought I had a long cord. My long cord is not long enough. If I was to do one of these again, that is the thing I would invest in is a longer USB cord to connect to my microphone. Um, pros of this, better sound. You can get it closer to the speakers. Um, some models you can control how what direction the, the microphone is facing so it specifically picks up in front or behind or full round sound. Um, so you can capture multiple speakers in some different ways um cons they pick up everything um especially in an echoey space which if you were if you saw the the lock mirror court where we uh switched up the baronage that was a very echoey hall and we were fighting with that microphone the entire time because it was picking up a lot of sound and just echoing hard now 
again on that expense thing you don't need to spend a fortune i have a fancy blue microphone and it's really shiny and pretty and it's also really expensive i have it because i use it for other things and i like shiny pretty things um but you don't need something that expensive there are very good inexpensive options uh do your research go online amazon um but also uh, a b h camera sometimes will have good reviews too so do some research, see what you can find. You might be surprised at how little you can spend on some of this stuff. Um, next option is a lavalier microphone. So these are the microphones that uh, you can wear on your clothes is the simplest version. There are also ones that'll put a microphone like up here, but that's, I think, more fiddly than anyone here will want to use. Um, you'll want a mic for every single speaker. Every single speaker will need one. If you're using a lav mic, you'll need some way to mix and combine the sound together, a soundboard or an application. This is something I don't have a lot of experience in, but it's out there. It's done. People do it. It is a definite option. Um, pros of this, you're putting a microphone very close to the speaker, which means you get just their voice and you don't have to turn up the sensitivity, the gain of that microphone to, uh, to catch everything that's being heard. Individual units are also a lot cheaper because just all of the components are smaller. And if you're mixing the sound, you can, if you have one speaker who is very quiet and another speaker who's very big and boomy, you can adjust the, the, how, how sensitive each microphone is so that everyone can be heard at about the same level when it hits the internet and goes out into the world. Um, the con, you have to manage those levels. Um, in a really professional setting, like a theater, there is a specific person whose job is to make sound, and that person is probably the most talented person on the show. They're also the least sung, and their praises should be sung from here to Kingdom Come, because it's a really hard job. It is an art to mix sound. Um, also, the setup can be a bit finicky. You just got more moving parts to work out. And it's also, you have to think about how you're going to hide that microphone. If we're in garb and you're trying to not break the the mystique, the the world of this show, having a big microphone sitting there, it's a pretty obvious giveaway. So it's something to consider. Um, the final option is a microphone on your camera. And webcams often have microphones. Um, you can sometimes, if you're using an external camera, it'll have a, a option to plug a microphone onto it. It might work. It might get you what you need. Don't discount that as an option. Now, how do you upgrade? Oh, one other thing before we go into uh, video. Um, it's very easy to think that, in, that good picture is what is critical to a good screen, stream and that that's where you should focus your energies. And yes, it's important. Audio is more important. If the audio is skipping, if you can't understand what's being said, it doesn't matter how beautiful the picture is because people can't understand what's happening. So audio, clear audio, specific audio is, is your best friend in a stream and viewers will forgive choppy video if the audio is good. There, therein lives my plug. All right, upgrading video. There are two ways that you could upgrade video. You can upgrade the quality and you can upgrade the quantity. Quality means a better camera, higher resolution, having more control of colors, having zoom. One example, if you wanna go really, really crazy, one of these, woo, it's a fancy SLR camera. You don't have to go this high. An external camera that just gets the picture closer to the individuals helps, right? Uh, if we're talking about that basic laptop setup that we were looking at, just adding a camera that isn't on the laptop is just an easy next step up. Um, quantity means the number of cameras, how many different cameras that you have. And if you have multiple cameras, you can point one at um, your Baron and Baroness, you can point another at the King and Queen, you can point another at the full group to have kind of a wide shot. You could have another camera that gets a very specific shot of the Herald if you wanted to get really artistic and fancy. Up to you. Um, if you are using a zoom camera or a camera that you intend to move and focus, I really suggest having at least a two camera setup. 
even if that second camera is a webcam. It doesn't need to be fancy, but you want something to switch to when you're moving that other camera around. You can give your, your audience a clear single shot, move your camera and then switch over and everything is focused and perfect and they don't have to suffer through you trying to get the like zoom to work the way you want it to. Um, and you don't have that pressure on your back as you're adjusting it of, oh, someone is watching me as I do this. Oh God, I have to get it right, right away. You can take your, a second to get it correct. Um, now, if are there any questions about this so far, actually? Does that make sense? Great. Um, now is where it starts to get even more interesting because now we're about to talk software. If you're going to start using multiple cameras, you need a way to switch between those different cameras. You can't unless you want to have five computers in the room and how many of us have five computers to plug to each camera. Um, you can't have multiple zoom rooms with cameras into them on the same computer. So you have to have a way to select one video stream to send into zoom. How do you do that? I use OBS. It is not the only option. There are others out there, but OBS Open Broadcast Studio, it is free, it is open source. There are a lot of people out there who use it, which means there are tutorials out the wazoo. Um, I will say OBS is a resource hog. So if you, this is another one of those things, you should test it and you should test it for the length of time that you are planning to stream before you get into the room and do this. I say this very specifically because I am running OBS right now. My computer is plugged in. And from the time we started until now, I am at 85% power because my computer is drawing so much power. It doesn't have anything to spare to go into the battery. It's actually running a deficit. So this is something to keep in mind. And I'm going to have to keep an eye on that as we stream. Uh, I'm also running other things that are making it take more. So that's part of what's going on. Um, so Open Broadcast Studio. Your video and your audio feeds come into OBS, and then the stream is sent out via a virtual camera feature, which then makes it in Zoom a uh, something that you can select just as you would any other camera in Zoom. And you can do this right now. If you go down to Zoom, you'll have a mute button. And next to that, you'll have a stop video or start video button. And there should be a little arrow pointing upwards next to that. And if you click that, there'll be an option to select a camera. So when you have OBS virtual camera running, it will show up kind of magically in this list. Um, so that's how you bring the stream from OBS into Zoom and then you can spotlight it, you can do whatever you need to do, or your, your lovely web host can do that for you. Um, and that is what will be sent out. Pre you can also use this to start and stop pre-recorded videos. You can have certain scenes, um, OBS has this concept of a scene, and that scene could have music playing underneath it at a certain level uh, compared to the volume of the speakers. Um, you could have a pre-show clip, a post-show clip. It, this, the sky is really the limit on some of this stuff. Um, as soon as you start getting into OBS, uh, setup can be finicky. It can be very finicky. So you need to test it in advance. You wanna have the run of your show plotted and planned. You want to have run through it several times in your house, set up, tear down, everything. Um, now, I do want to take a second to talk about audio in OBS. Um, if you are using OBS with audio, you're going to need to do a little bit of work to route the sound the way you want, especially if you're playing any music or videos with music as part of what you're doing. Um, it's definitely doable. You might need a few other tools to make it happen. On my Mac, I'm using something called Virtual Cables, which is donationware. That means you uh, pay what you can, um, software option. I know that this can be done on PC. I just haven't set it up because I'm a Mac girl. 
Um, so you'll end up, you might need to do some research to figure out exactly how you plug what into where to get the sound doing what you want it to do. Um, any questions about OBS so far? And if, if there's a desire, we can try and do a screen share of one later, but I don't want to spend too much time in OBS setup land. Your Majesty Trimeris, I see your uh, microphone came off. Question? Uh, yes. Um, if, if I understood what you just said, the, in OBS, if you're using an external microphone, it's treated as a separate stream from the video? Uh, yes. So you have, you have two options with it, really. You okay. could, if you were doing no audio in OBS whatsoever, you're just okay. using it to mix your video. You could then have the sound from your microphone go directly into Zoom. Okay. Right? Because uh, in Zoom, audio and uh, video are handled kind of separately. They're, they're separate options for where they can come okay. from. Um, if you want to do any kind of mixing, your videos have sound in them, um, any of that kind of stuff, and OBS is where you choose to do that, because it's not your only option, mm -hmm. um, you can then set up on, on in my system i'm using virtual cables there may be a different way on a pc um but i essentially virtual cables works like a patch cable in audio so i can take the sound from my microphone send it on a specific on a specific cable along with some others it gets brought into obs and then i use a different cable from obs to stream out to zoom so zoom listens to the obs feed sound comes into OBS in various ways and um, uh, uh, its its levels can be set there. It has a, a mixer in it, it. Um, to let you adjust. So for example, um, during that court I mentioned where we had a very echoey room, um, our Herald especially, he was using his, his booming, let me hit the entire world sound. And then we had a, uh, uh, I don't remember, who specifically it was, but one of the uh, one of the other talent um, was very soft spoken and really had trouble getting a lot of sound to come out. And so I was manually every time the Herald spoke, taking the mic sound down for a second so that that he wouldn't blow the speakers out and, and hurt people's ears and then bringing it back up as soon as he was done so that uh, uh, the other people could be heard properly. Got it. Um Two questions then yeah. as a follow-up. Number one, um, I, I, I gather that by implication then uh, using OBS or something similar, I can run video um, and source the audio from something different mm -hmm. and stream them together, number one. Yes. And, and potentially mix several audio streams and, and, and have them go out. Absolutely. And two, I'm assuming that uh, the magic black box that is OBS deals with any kind of issues where this, the audios are for synchronization purposes? It's, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, it's, I'm not sure I like that answer so much. It, it, yeah. Um, there's a certain amount of audio sync that, that can be challenging on streaming anyway. Um, it's, it's pretty good, and there are there may be tools in it that help you get closer. I have not poked at them much. Gotcha. So that, was that, it. Thank that you. is the yeah, absolutely good. Very good question. Um, for those who don't know what uh, what His Majesty is referencing, um, uh, sync issues are when the video is a few seconds of ahead of or behind the audio, and it can be very not really seconds, even milliseconds. And it can be a little bit disconcerting to see someone's mouth moving at one speed and their voice moving at another. That being said, if you take a moment to look at my picture right now, I am streaming my video through OBS right now and my audio through Zoom. So those are coming in on different feeds. And there's maybe a little bit of difference, but it's not awful, right? So that's there. Elizabeth, I see your hand. I just wanted to reiterate because you said you didn't want to get into it. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of gaming streaming. Um, I will. Yeah, I've there. got I've got suggestions on resources. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Okay. 
but good, good, good call out. All right, I'm gonna lower your hand. Great. All right. So other useful equipment. You're gonna need a laptop probably. As I've already said, I'm partial to Mac. That being said, you can use PCs too. I think Sophia, you're using a PC. Um, there are, as, as was just mentioned, a lot of the people doing really interesting things with this are uh, video game streamers and most of them are on PCs. So it can be done on PC very easily. Um, bring a power strip with you. Just bring it. They're going to say they have one. It doesn't matter. Bring a power strip. You don't want to not have one. It can break your stream. An external monitor. This is a weird one. Um, I have found, I didn't, I, when, the first time I brought one, I thought I was just bringing it for me, for my own comfort. And then I realized that during the stream, I can turn it to face uh, their excellencies and their highnesses or whoever is speaking to people in a Zoom room if you're doing something that's like a, a live back and forth. Um, and it gives them a nice big screen to look at. Um, so I actually, whereas before I thought it was something that was just for me to make my life easier, it's really useful actually, do it. Um, an external mouse and keyboard, I prefer using an external mouse and keyboard, that's just me. Uh, if you have one, I suggest you use it. Um, a stream deck, this is a cool piece of tech. So you don't have to get the physical one, which looks like this. That is a stream deck. You don't need one like that. There is a app on your phone that is, I think you do have to buy it, but it's not super expensive. Um, and it lets you set up, a, set up a set of keys that will do specific tasks. And I'm gonna try and give you guys a view of the app. It's not gonna be a full view because I don't have a full window here, but that is what Stream Deck looks like. So as you can see, I have these different scenes that I've set up in OBS and I can press buttons to switch between them. I'm not gonna do that right now because it will mess with what you're seeing. You won't see OBS anymore, but I can on this thing, which you can see matches, maybe, let me see if I can get a screen up there. Uh, it matches uh, 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 the stream like that. You can see it, right? It matches what you see on the screen. So that is how you set up different buttons to do different actions. It is an incredibly useful tool. I use it in my day to day all the time. And I could not do these streams without OBS. There's just no way. It'd be too hard to trigger everything. Um, so I'm a huge fan of that. Um, you're going to want a tripod or tripods if you're doing anything moving cameras. It's also just a really easy way to set up your camera um, independent of tables and that kind of thing, which can be big, lets you put your camera in a slightly odder location that you otherwise might not be able to get to. Um, finally, headphones. Wireless if possible, just because having a cord attached to your computer when you're moving around, it's a, a recipe if, to disaster. Um, so wireless headphones if possible. If you are doing a Zoom or if you're doing a something like a court where you have uh, the people in the room speaking to people in Zoom back and forth. You will want headphones for your participants as well. Earbuds are great for this. They should, they log into the Zoom room themselves on their phone connected to their headphones. They keep their phone like secreted behind them or somewhere near them. And then they have a lagged but present uh, uh, ear on what is going on in that room, which means they can hear conversations and questions. Um, it is a little disconcerting because the Zoom room is about two seconds behind what's happening in the room, so you do get a lag. Um, you probably want just one in your ear at any point, but it is really helpful and you want to be able to monitor sound. Um, any questions there? Cool. Useful software. OBS, we've been talking about. Photoshop or some other in imaging editing software. I saw someone who asked a question about how I was doing this slide inset thing. Um, what's happening? I've got a Photoshop in this case, because I like Photoshop, but you don't have to use Photoshop file. It is a PSD, which means it can have transparency. It's just a file format, but PSDs let you do transparent areas. So 
it it is um, if you think about it like a frame like a photo frame I've got a photo frame that's sitting on top of everything else I've got a feed from one of my monitors which is running this presentation that you're watching has useful software on it and it's sort of focused around that spot on the on the camera and I've said that that is where it should go behind this frame and then layered in front of that I have a video of myself with in the frame, a kind of nice wooden little bit around it um, that's sort of dealing with my face and gives you that camp picture in picture. So that's how I'm getting this picture in picture. I have a Photoshop image, which um, actually I think I'm not even using PSDs. I think uh, OBS can import Photoshop directly. So if you have Photoshop, cool. If not, PSDs work too. Um, that I'm using to, to bring the the footage into this realm and this world it's a it's a pretty neat uh neat setup i'm rather proud um had, go ahead does that mean that you had to convert your your powerpoint slides into photoshop files then nope not at all um so obs is running these videos it, it's obs lets you layer different elements right so okay. this screen in obs has three pieces on it one of them is the slideshow, what I'm calling slideshow background, which is actually my framing. And that's on the very top. Behind that, I have this webcam image over here. Hi. Um, which is the, uh, the video of me. And then in that, that Photoshop image above, it's got the, the wood that you see around up there. Mm -hmm. That's the Photoshop image that helps me line things up if I have a frame in my image. And then behind that photo video of me, there is the uh, uh, screen share, or excuse me, the uh, uh, slide image, the slides, which okay. is actually running for me on a separate monitor. Um, and I've constrained the, the view in OBS to just show that section. So it gives you a lot of very fine grained control. With that control comes more fiddliness and with that control comes more need to test everything to make sure it works the way you want every layer of complication is something that can go wrong so you really want to as you as you level up practice 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 um i was talking already about other any other questions first off don't mean to steamroll cool um I spoke already about virtual cable. This is something that lets you route sound on a Mac. Um, there are equivalents for PC. I just don't know them. And finally, a software utility. If you've got it for your webcam and you're using a webcam, there are software utilities from your webcam manufacturer, usually, that will let you tweak the settings. For me, for example, I am shooting in a room with a really dark backdrop and very low light. So even when I have all of my lights on, if I go to the native settings for my webcam, um, it is, it just looks bad. I look like I have jaundice. It's a, a problem. I'm yellowed or I'm super blown out because it's trying to, to bump up the light because it's trying to figure out the best, the best picture it can, but I'm throwing something hard at it. So I have, I use a, a in my case, I'm using a Logitech camera. Um, Logitech has some different utilities. I use their gaming uh, use software utility, which lets me tweak the gain, the color. Um, I can do a whole bunch of different settings on there to uh, uh, get the best picture quality possible, even using a pretty basic camera. Um, so that's actually if you're if you're trying to level up um, your video, that's actually a really good early place to look before you even invest in other cameras is just how can you tweak your settings on your camera or give yourself better lighting in the room to get that picture a little bit better. Um, cool. So let's take a look at what that upgraded system might look like. Multi-camera, single microphone. These are the systems that Sophia and I have been using as we've been doing these virtual streams. And I noticed she uh, posted a link to all the Atlantean court recordings in the chat. Um, so this is what we used for Storvik, and this is what we used for Lockmir. Um, you'll see we've got the pointy hats, the talent 
they might be in different locations. This might be the king and queen. This might be the baron and baroness, for example. We've got a microphone. I have placed it as close to the speakers as I can um, without it showing on camera, ideally, although we've fought with that pretty much every stream because positioning is hard. I've got this camera and this camera. These are both uh, uh, webcams, so very simple, very basic. Not a lot can go wrong with these cameras. They just kind of work. Um, and then this camera over here, which is my, I put it down, but that's my big DSLR camera with the really pretty picture that just is awesome. Um, these are all plugging into a computer running OBS and Zoom. OBS is sending its video and in this case, its audio into Zoom so that I can play videos and have title cards with sound and all of that sort of stuff underneath. And in this instance, unlike in the simpler setup where Sophia is really controlling who is everything about who is on screen, she could play videos in Zoom herself if she wanted to. Um, instead, that control is now in the room. It's with me. I have that ball. Um, but then from, from this point on, it's the exact same. Going to internet going to the Zoom room, we have Silent Herald, we have Zoom participants, and going out to YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or whatever. Um, before we go too much further, uh, I do wanna pause again for questions, but I also do want to say, you don't have to go through Zoom. You can cut Zoom out of this completely if that is not something that you need. OBS is very capable of streaming directly to YouTube or going from OBS into a different service, which then streams to multiple locations. So you could stream to Facebook, to Twitch, to YouTube, to the to your own private server. Um, the possibilities are endless. We're not going to be talking a lot about that, but as previously hinted, um, there are a lot of people who are doing this kind of thing. Um, primarily in the uh, gaming space. So there's a lot, and those are a group of people who really like making tutorials and telling you how they're doing stuff. So there are a lot of resources out there if you want to explore other things you could do. There's a lot to do. So here's a picture of that Lockmere court. Um, everyone is masked who is close. Uh, there is more distance, uh, uh, there's more depth in this image than it carries through. So just to kind of get that out of the gate. This was a safe location. Uh, we were paying a lot of tension, attention. And this was the moment when Melchior was getting his, uh, uh, he was being elevated to the peerage, which meant a lot to all of us in that room. So we were all kind of trying to see what was happening on the screen in that moment. Um, you can see here that I've got that monitor, which is turned to face the participants so they can see what's going on. There's my laptop here running OBS. This is what OBS looks like, guys. Um, I've got my keyboard and my microphone. I've also got a pad of paper and a pen. Really useful to have when you're running a stream. Um, I've got a spare camera for my battery because that camera can, or excuse me, a spare battery for my camera because uh, you run through battery kind of quick. You can see I've got my hub here, which we ran this court on a hub. Um, Stream Deck right there set up with the uh, with everything going on, including and this is a if you end up using a Stream Deck pro tip, I have it set up so that I can uh, turn on and off my microphone and camera straight from there, which can be a really useful get out of jail free card button to have. If you have to pull the plug, you can very quickly and very easily. Um, my camera is here set up on a tripod focused on a specific individual. This is what I believe is streaming in this moment. And then it's a little bit hard to see, but right there is one of my two webcams. Right there is another. And you can see kind of a leg of a, a bench over here. That is actually the bench that the microphone is sitting on. So that's the setup. I've got a power strip right there. And I'm using Wi-Fi or I'm using uh, my hotspot for my internet um, because the, the space we, we couldn't get onto Wi-Fi. They didn't have Wi-Fi in the space. That was the day I was really glad to have a backup. Any questions? Going too fast, too slow? Is all this making sense to everyone? I hope so. Cool. 
All right. Let's take a quick second just to stretch because we have all been sitting here for a while. Just take a moment. This comes from the theater person in me. I always want to break equity rules. And then we will get back to it. Once Sophia is done stretching, since I can't see the rest of you to know whether or not you're back. All right. Cool. So we've talked about the uh, uh, the setup, the equipment, the hardware, all of that kind of stuff. Now let's talk about how do you build one of these things? What do you do? What's the what's the theatery? Because that's where I come from. Way of putting together this dare I say show. Um. First thing I do is I set up some OBS scenes for Atlantean Virtual Course. These are the ones that I've been using just in general. I'll have one that's a pre-show. It's a static image that has recorded audio playing behind. It doesn't have to be static. It could be a, a, a series of artwork or photos from previous events. It, it could be anything. Um, I have generally put the date, the start time, any other details about the event, and I turn off sound. So this can be up. And the people in the room don't have to be like, okay, now we're hushed because sound is live because sound's not live for it. Um, the cool thing about this, and this is something that we haven't explored that much yet, you could put this up 10 minutes before the stream is, before the court is scheduled to begin, which means you could start your court, your stream way in advance, which means that little lag that Sophia mentioned doesn't have to get you down at all because you're not starting the stream immediately. You have as much time as you want to get everyone in position, make sure everyone looks right, just take a breath. It gives you control, which is really nice to have. Um, I have a screen for each of my cameras. So my DSLR has one. Um, I'll set up chirons, which are the, the little uh, images that go over the bottom and have words about who someone is and might have the like uh, uh, the, the heraldry for that person or that group. Um, it's a little added touch. It, it's purely for pretty, but I like them. Um, I'll also have a camera pointed at the baronage with a Chiron listing their names in the barony. Similarly, I'll have one pointed at the royals. That one also has a Chiron so I can direct the camera at different people. And if, um, if someone is streaming in who doesn't know who people are, um, they're, you know, I'm streaming in, in Storvik in Atlantia, someone in Bright Hills might not know what my Baron and Baroness look like. So there's something on there that says, this is the Baron and Baroness who are speaking, or this is the King and Queen, if you haven't had a chance to see what they look like yet. Um, any... Any video that I'm going to play, anything that is pre-recorded, gets its own scene. And again, for when those are playing, the microphone is disabled. So if we need to, it gives the, the people in the room a chance to powwow chat, really quickly say what's going on. Um, I will also have a, a static card that plays, that's sort of the, the baseline image behind the video so that and then I have the setting in set up in OBS so that the video will play. And then um, as soon as the video is done, it disappears. But I still have that half moment where this, this pretty image is showing. So it doesn't cut directly back to the room. I control that. Again, there's just this element of I can control when video is showing so that no one is ever caught unawares. Means you do have to stay a little bit on the ball during the show, but that's fine. There's a separate video for the award scrolls that will have recorded audio playing it beneath. Again, the microphone is disabled. This also has that video insert at the back. Um, and then after the show, I will have a static image that can play with the recorded audio playing behind. It's just a nicer way to end the stream to have sort of a little outro thing. It's like the credits. Credits are nice. They're just like a button on the end of it. Have some kind of credits. Um, and again, microphone is disabled. There's usually audio playing underneath. Um, and finally, I will have a standby card. I have never had to use it and fingers crossed, I never will have to use it. But if anything goes wrong, um, 
I don't know what could happen. But if something goes wrong, you have something that you can throw up without even thinking about it that says, hey, we're dealing with something. We'll be back in a second. Relax. It's, again, an attempt to make sure that your audience doesn't need to worry about you. They don't need to worry. You have it under control. You've, you've got it all handled. That's, that's what you're kind of trying to put out there. So planning for a live stream. Communication. It is essential. Establish communication with the event organizer as early as possible. Set a deadline for any materials that you are going to be provided with. Video clips, scroll images, audio, everything. And set that deadline to give yourself time to incorporate them into your setup. Your computer's going to crash as you're building all of this out. It happens. Give yourself time. This, especially in the SCA, you have to be really specific and early in communicating these deadlines because we are used to thinking, oh, I can keep working on this scroll until the minute before it is going to be presented to the person. And if you're doing a virtual court where you want to have a picture of that scroll integrated in, you kind of can't. The closer to the, the stream you get this material, the more stressed out you're going to be on whether or not it works. You want to be able to test everything as much as possible, which means you have to have it. And you can use stand-ins, but if there's some kind of weird formatting issue on the video that you've been given and you find out three hours before you stream that you can't play it, you're up a creek. I, I've been trying to set those deadlines as like the Wednesday before so that I then have time to integrate it in and use it in rehearsal. Um, set a deadline for when you want a basic run of the show, which means talking to uh, uh, whoever is running the event to say what's going to happen. Now, this can be very tricky because Royals especially, we want to keep uh, uh, Royals want to keep the, the stuff that's going on secret. We want to preserve that specialness of what's going on. And it's so, so what is going to happen is kept very close and is, I think, usually only shared with the heralds. And even then it might be day of, um, it, it's just, it's kept very secret. And so you have to find some way to become another one of those trusted people with that information only because the more information you have the less gray hairs the event is going to give you. Um, surprises when you're dealing with video are just, they're hard to mitigate, they're hard to deal with. So if, if you are able to become one of those trusted individuals in running this event, it will only be to your benefit. That being said, you also do have to respect the uh, wishes and desires of the people running the court. If they want to keep everything secret, that's their prerogative. And you're going to have to adjust and work with them. So it's this weird place of, of pushing for inclusion, but also being very flexible if, if they don't want to let you in. Um, work with your talent, work with your stewards, see what you can do. Um, a very useful way to phrase this is to say, uh, uh, you want to help it make it a really good show. Is there anything special that they would like to have happen or incorporate and give them a chance to help shape what it looks like? which then means that they'll be invested in helping you make it look really, really good. It, it makes it a team, which is in this kind of thing, all to the benefit and all to the good, because you are a team. Um, that's what I just said. Um, and again, the more information you have, the more you can prepare in advance, the less stress you're going to be under the, during that live stream. Keep in mind as you're running through your rehearsals, especially if you're doing any rehearsals, and I'll hit this again later, um, there may be secrets that other people on your tech team are not included in. Uh, you may be giving an award to someone who sometimes sits in on the streams. This happened. So you do have to be a little bit cognizant of what you play and make sure you don't spill the beans. If they're letting you into secrets, treat them like gold. Be very careful if you get that kind of access. It is a sacred trust and treat it well. Um, so let's talk about the rehearsals you can have. And I see we are at 11.30, so we've got about 20 minutes left. Thank you for bearing with me, everybody. Um, tech rehearsal is a rehearsal that is with just the technical staff. It's usually just me and Sophia, maybe one other person if we wanna practice a few things, but that's not necessarily necessary. We're gonna talk through what our procedures are. Um, 
what we know of the run of the show and which of us will be handling what in that. We'll talk about what we already have, what's missing, all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. What's your pre-show script? When is the stream going to start? Is it going to start right at the time? Or are you starting it earlier in advance, which might affect when you need to have title cards up? How are you going to communicate during the stream? Do you want to use Zoom chat, text messages, Facebook? What's going to work for you? Something to keep in mind on that, you probably don't want to use Zoom chat if you have non-technical people in the chat only because then they can hear everything that's going on and you might want to say something that's about hey i can't hear this person in zoom can you get them to bump up the microphone so it's it's useful to have a separate communication stream if possible texts are great um then you're going to separately want to have a dress rehearsal this is a rehearsal with your technical staff and as much of the team as you can assemble if you're if your royalty is willing to be on this stream, great, because then you can establish how are you going to communicate during it? Um, uh, how am I going to tell you to bump up your sound, to take your sound down, all of that kind of stuff. They can't participate in the space most likely because COVID is a thing and we want to limit uh, uh, interaction, but at least having them there means they'll be clued into everything that's going on. Um, you should use stand-ins for anything that you don't have physically. So if you're using a, a webcam and another webcam and an SLR camera, point those things, are you guys are frozen, good. Um, point those things at physical things, point it at your dog, point it at rubber duckies that look like Anne Boleyn and Shakespeare. This is what I did, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, uh, the goal is to uh, run through every cue of the show in as close to your production setup as possible. If videos are ready and won't be spilling any secrets, play them. If not, have a video that is in the same like file type and ideally produced the same way, playing in its place. You want to be as close to your production setup as possible. Um, if you can, if you have the space for this, set it up in a different place from where you would normally set up your computer. This is so that you can practice that setup and tear down. And then when you pack it all away, you can just pack it all away straight into your bag and you know that you have everything you need because everything that you used in that dress rehearsal went right into the bag. So really, it's a useful trick there. Finally, leave yourself some time to make adjustments after that dress rehearsal is done. If your court is at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning, have your rehearsal on Thursday night so that on Friday you can make those changes and still get a decent night of sleep because you're going to need it. Set up, day of. You're going to have a table. Most venues have one. Check if you're not sure. You're going to set up your power cord. You're going to set up your computer, your monitor, your keyboard, your hotspot if you're using it. Position your microphone so it's as close to the talent and your cords and your cameras allow. Set up your cameras. Get a basic focus. If you're going to move one midstream, make sure that you can get to it from your computer. Um, if it's way over there and your computer's here and you need to switch camera streams, it's going to be a problem. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Sign into Zoom. Talk to the Zoom Herald. Make sure everything is working. All is as it should be. Check the sound levels for every person, every piece of every talent in the room and make sure that the Zoom host says, yes, I can hear that person. Have each of them say, not just like testing one, two, three, but some phrases, talk a bit. Establish how you're going to communicate with each of them during the stream if they need to be louder or quieter, because inevitably you start getting into the flow of the court, you start getting in character or whatever's going on and your vocal quality changes. And so you need the ability to say like, hey, get a little louder or hey, take it down, you're blowing out my microphone. Set up your cameras and your angles. If you have software that you can use to adjust exposure or other camera settings, this is the time to, to set those levels. Check that all the videos play the way that you expect them with the sound, and this is very important, the sound working the way you want it to, carrying into the Zoom room, as well as to the live participants listening on ear. Be careful. If you, you will have control of some secrets at this point, no matter how cagey people have been, some videos, even if it's just that you have the scroll, uh, the scroll video at the end, which has uh, everyone's awards that they're getting. 
don't spill those secrets. You might have people in Zoom who are getting those awards. Don't tell them what's going on in advance. Keep the surprise. Um, check with the in-person participants. Make sure if they're planning any shenanigans, you know about them. Don't be afraid to suggest tweaks to what they're doing. Um, asking if they can angle what they're doing in a certain direction. Normally we're very used to kneeling on, on cushions that are directly in front of their majesties, but maybe they can stagger them slightly or even turn those cushions so that the Baron and Baroness who are being invested, you can really capture their face and what's going on. Um, it's, it's this weird thing where there's this extra, extra audience that you want to give a way in and sometimes just Staggering the position of people will be enough to make it happen. Also, keep in mind, because we are in COVID, um, you also can be an extra check on making sure that everyone stays uh, six feet apart and distance. So you can also be an extra check on that if you have the bandwidth to keep an eye on it. It can be useful. Um, if you need to mute your microphones before the show, do it. Make sure that what's feeding into show is, or into Zoom is what you want for the top of show. And you're ready everything's set up, you're good to go. It doesn't happen nearly that quickly, but you're ready to go. And breathe. Because you're about to go into it, but the hardest part and the most stressful part is probably your setup, if we're being honest. For the run of the show, during rehearsal, you're going to talk about who has the go button or buttons for your stream. Zoom host might be the only person who does. If you're not controlling any of what's showing in the room, um, they're just going to click the start button on Zoom and you are live and you go. Or, like Sophia and myself, um, she may have the go button on the stream and I have the go button in the room. Switching from that pre-show card to the live video. We set up a script. So, Zoom, Sophia says she's starting the stream. Let's actually do it. Unmike and do it. Unmute. Yep, she's trying to find her mute. Cool. Roger that. So uh, you want me to live stream somewhere? I can live stream. No, it's fine. Account. Just just talk it through. <laughs> um, OK, so we're at the point where I've got everything set up, all those little buttons, and I'm hitting that go live button. All right. Marguerite, here I go. It's going live. Three, two, one. Cool. And I text her and I say, sounds good. Let's break some legs. And then she tells me. The stream has started. Cool. And, and I text back. <laughs> stream started. Cool. Places. And then in the room, I say to everyone, hey, guys, we are at places. Everyone ready. Thumbs up. All good. Have a great show. Let's get excited. Whatever I or we want to do, um, I'll say places, and then I'll say we are going live in five, four, three, and then I hit the button. And then the stream is live. That's it. During the stream, I'll be switching between the different cameras, all of that sort of stuff, doing whatever I need to do um, in a very simple court. That may all be all I had to do to get things going. In a complicated court, I may be very busy the entire time. After the, or during the stream, like I just said, triggers, all of those sorts of things. At the end, I will switch to that post stream card and mute my microphone. Zoom will leave it up for the agreed upon time, 10 seconds, a minute, whatever. You could do a slideshow of photos from previous events, whatever you wanted to do. That might actually be kind of nice and we haven't done that yet. Um, the Zoom host will end the stream and tell me that we are off, and then I will tell everyone in the room, hey guys, stream is turned off, we are closed, congratulations, we did it, celebrate! Now, post-show, take a breath, you're gonna need it. Adrenaline happens, it is real, especially if you haven't been doing a lot of these. I think for the, the king and queen, the adrenaline may kind of come down a little bit because uh, they've done a bunch of them now, at least in Atlantia. But for um, uh, for Baronage, especially, they're also going to be kind of like, oh my God, we just did this. What was this we just did? It's There's a lot. Take a breath. Acknowledge it. It's a real thing. Um, Pack up your equipment. It's really tempting to jump in and help other people. Take care of your own equipment first. 
Uh, your equipment is more fragile than a lot of things. If it gets bumped, if it gets dropped, there will be problems. You can break it. Uh, also, don't forget to maintain distance. We are in plague times, unfortunately. Um, one final thing, schedule a post-mortem with your technical team and anyone else who wants to be involved, who was involved in the production of this thing. Uh, we've generally been calling these a hot wash. It's something you want to do ideally that day, um, maybe when you've gotten back home and have had a chance to had, have a cup of tea and breathe, but it wants to be close enough to the end of your stream that everything is still very fresh. You still have a strong memory of what was happening. You're going to talk through what worked, what didn't work, what might you change for next time. Uh, you might have suggestions to give to other people involved that come out of the hot wash. One that came out of one of ours was calling the person in Zoom the Zoom Herald trying to figure out how to solve the, the problem of communicating what they were doing to people who didn't have an understanding. Um, finally, a few sources for more information, some inspiration. We've already said that video gamers are live streaming all the time. D&D &D streamers are actually closer to what we're doing even than live stream gamers because they are streaming multiple video cameras from different places and they all have to talk to each other with audio and video and often they're streaming something from the DM's uh, computer screen as well. So they can be a really good resource to look up. Um, like I just said, they're they're streaming from multiple locations. They want to talk to those locations. They want to put it on a streaming platform. This all sounds really familiar. Also, take a look at how newscasts hand off between live and recorded pieces or between different speakers, because they've they've perfected some of this art form. And so looking at how they're doing that could help you figure out, especially if you are someone who is on camera, how do you pass things around and signal easily what you're going to move to next? Also, keep in mind that the person who is on camera, the talent saying, okay, now we're going to so-and-so this person, they're, they're not the ones deciding who they're throwing to. They've got a producer in their ear saying, okay, now we're going to go to, uh, uh, to Ann Curry over in the Situation Room. And then the talent is saying that so the audience can follow along. So communicate. this kind of gets back to that communicating what's happening set up. You really want the person controlling what you're looking at to know what where you're going and what's going on. It's just better for everyone. Um, another place to watch for inspiration is actually D&D &D live streams. These are going up on Twitch and YouTube all the time. Um, and again, they're using a lot of similar tools. They're using OBS um, uh, and they can give you great ideas. They're not often throwing a huge amount of money at what they're doing. So again, they're doing it pretty cheap, pretty efficiently, and they're getting some pretty good results. Um, so that is the end of my slide deck. And we have about five minutes left before 1150, which was when we are supposed to be done. So on that note, any questions, any uh, setups that people want to talk through. Uh, is there anything else that people want to kind of delve into? Yeah, just a real quick note, Marguerite. The next thing yes. after us is lunch. Ah, well, that's good. We got a couple minutes. It. We can be flexible. It's okay. Cool. <laughs> FYI. I mean, we do have convocation, but that's a video that anybody can look at whenever they're ready to. But yes, that being right said, I have to go get ready to teach two other classes after this. So. <laughs> I we have, have fun. a little flex, a little flex. Yeah, okay. we have a little flex. So with that, any questions? Moggy, I see your hand. Yes, uh, I see the lovely uh, um, brown frame uh, that you've got there, courtesy of OBS. Mm -hmm. And I saw in a different stream you did, you had some lovely writing on one of those frames. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if Moggy were doing a concert on the web, I could say, Moggy's virtual tip jar is at blah, blah, blah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but that can't be an active link, can it? Not out of OBS. Um, okay. If you are getting into... If you are looking at other platforms like Twitch, um, there are ways to do that, but you're probably <clears throat> taking your video out of... You may not be using OBS in that point. You might be using... 
um, some other software that's actually built on top of OBS to handle those kinds of overlays and that sort of stuff. Um, if that is something you're interested in doing, do some online research. You'll find people who've done it. Okay. And guys, I've got an example I'm putting in the chat right now for something like that. You can link, you can just click on that. That's the blibbering humdingers. And it's a modern non-SCA uh, show of folks you might recognize as Effenwalt and Anor. Uh, they're just doing it in their living rooms and they've got a nice little logo up at the top. It says blimberinghumdingers.com and that's where they have their tip jar. And so they tell people put that in as they go through the show. Uh, so that's just a nice example. Uh, you, you may have covered this before, but uh, you made reference to Chirons and to title cards, et cetera. Yep. Um, is there, I mean, can I just make those in anything um, or is there, uh, you know, Adobe Premiere or Illustrator or et cetera? I mean, wh what tools do you use for that? And you probably covered this also, but how do you integrate those into uh, OBS? Got it. Um, so in OBS, this wasn't really an OB, I didn't want to do just a, a OBS tutorial. Understood. Um, but in OBS, if you, if you download it and fire it up, you'll be able to create scenes. And then within scenes, you have sources. And so you're just adding, you can add various different things to sources. A source can be uh, your display. A source can be an application window. A source can be... Um, a, a file that you play, a image coming out of a, a Photoshop image, a PSD, a, uh, a JPEG, a GIF, uh, many, many possibilities. Um, and so you set those up as sources. And then when you flip between scenes, different sources are visible. So to answer uh, your question, you could build those cards in you could build those those cards or those chirons or anything in um in in photoshop in premiere whatever you want to do that outputs a file and then import that file into obs um before you spend too much time building it out i would test it with a simple version and i would also um uh, uh look at how do i want to put this um if if it's if the file format you're having trouble getting in, do a do a Google search, um, importing MP4 into OBS, Got and it. someone will have done it and be able to tell you, yes, you can do it with this file format, and here's how. Or hey, this file format you can't do, you need to convert it, and then another Google search convert MP4 to JQ's cool format. And someone will have done that and have a way for you to do it. Excellent. Google's Thank your you. friend. Absolutely. Um, I see a hand from Ellen DeLacy. And if you have questions and you have the ability to use the raise hand feature, let's do that just because it gives us a nice order. So Ellen. Would you be willing to teach a class for um, courts using OBS, basically using OBS for courts um, specifically? Yeah, yeah, we could definitely uh, look at doing something like that. Absolutely. Um, I'll make a note. Hey, Ellen, um, or I mean, Marguerite, Ellen had put mm -hmm. in the chat, and I think it's also a good idea. Do you have any links handy for uh, the best videos you found on YouTube for learning OBS? I don't because I am awful about saving them. Um, however, uh, sort of another bit of background on me when I'm not a, a, a theater person, I am also a software engineer and you learn pretty quickly in software that you're not going to break anything by playing and by poking. So download the software, play with it, do a quick search for a, a OBS tutorial. You'll find some YouTube videos, watch them try and do what they're doing just to play. Spending time for playing will be incredibly useful. Um, at the end, before we are done, I'm actually going to post up a feedback form, which uh, has a place, I see uh, at least one person has sent me their email directly. 
Um, it'll be a feedback form, let you give me some comments, put in your email if you want. And if you want a mailing list as well, if you wanna be on a mailing list from me, you can, but you don't have to. You don't have to give your email if you don't want to, but just a, a way to get some feedback. And if you want follow up on anything, definitely make a note in there and I will try and uh, get to those for everybody. Um, in fact, let me give that link right now. I will post it again before we are done. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. Cool. Google form, fill it out if you would like. No pressure. Um, also, let this be your reminder. Uh, make sure that in the university website, you have marked that you attended class so that you get credit. Um, we are sort of taking attendance, but uh, in Atlanta University, the responsibility for attendance is really on the participants to report, not on the instructors. Um, cool. Any other questions? Elizabeth, I see your microphone is off. I was just going to comment um, about the research side, because this is what I've spent the last six weeks doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, in, in looking, doing your research and looking at reviews, make sure you're looking at stuff that's not one item specific. Look at comparison videos or comparison mm. style um, reviews. And here's the reason why, because I know you went into a lot of detail about the lav mic. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because I am currently using a lav mic, mm -hmm. but it's not attached to me. And I found that in mm. a review because I use this for my cooking video segment that I did for the Glen Auburn Grand Chefs. And yep. I actually had this attached over my head to my light. Yep. And it and yep. it had a lot of good it's got a lot of good range. And I saw that in somebody else's review of that mic. Yeah, that is and, that is a very good pointer. And that mic actually came with two mics with I think an 18 foot cord. Mm-hmm. So they do they usually do so it was it was very nice to be able to see that and i just wanted other people to know that some people give reviews that are paid commentary yeah and it's easier if you get a comparison definitely yeah, by the way guys another another lady, cool place oh oh sorry go ahead. lady elizabeth just ran her first massive huge virtual event last weekend glenn Aubin's candlemas and she rocked it. I look. I watched it. It was a. It was a gorgeous event. And if there's somebody that has come up to speed quickly to get the thing to happen, it's this lovely lady right here. So I do not recommend great. thirty days or less. <laughs> <laughs> not go. at all. <laughs> Good to see you again. Elizabeth. Thank you, Your Majesty Trimaris. Looks like he had to leave. I don't think he heard me. That's fine. Um, all I can't wait right. to see Trimera's courts in the next mm. couple of weeks. That'll oh, be yeah. Well, this is also a little tricky because it's very hard to run. The, this is actually something I didn't talk about, but um, it is very hard. It, it, at least for me, the part of my brain that does being on camera is a different part of my brain from the one that runs all of this technical stuff. So I cannot imagine how hard it would be to be running it and to be on camera. So if you have someone who can <laughs> who can do some of that for you, I, I highly recommend you lean into that and, and try and do it. I, I will say Twitch streamers seem to do it and have a handle, so it's doable. But I, I can't imagine trying to run a stream and be on it at the same time. If I had not had the social media team, if I had not had Mr. Shiraz handling the Zoom side of stuff, I, I would have been in hot water all the way around. Because yep. before December, putting me on a camera, hang that up, that would not mm -hmm. have happened. <laughs> and then she's the one that got us into the Grand Chef video, cooking video series that we did. Matter of fact, we got another one coming up. But had she not been so enthusiastic and and willing to promote all this, you know, I, I would not have, I would not be doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> I hear you. And the only reason why I'm here today is so I can pass information on to others because that was not a comfortable spot Saturday. <laughs> it's like, can I go back to cooking now? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Cool. Um, any other questions? I have one last thing I'd like to, yeah 
see if you could speak about if nobody else that's a student has any questions. Okay, Go okay, super. It. So you and I talked a little bit about um, the option to either have OBS on your side feeding into Zoom mm -hmm. or while I'm in Zoom using OBS myself. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about those two different options? I know we don't have time to go into it, but uh, plant the seed of yes. those two different ways you can use OBS. So as people research Absolutely. and learn. So OBS, you could use OBS at any stage on every computer involved in this system and none of them are dependent on any of the others, right? So for me in the room, I'm using OBS as a mixer. I'm using it to select various sources of video and audio and mix them together to put them out into the world. I'm putting them into Zoom, which is how we're streaming. But Zoom doesn't care whether my video is coming from OBS or from just a camera plugged into it or whatever. It doesn't care. It's video at that point, just like the audio is audio. So similarly, the person in the Zoom room could take, instead of streaming from Zoom live and using the Zoom setup that Sophia showed you, instead, she could be running OBS on her computer. She could then capture the Zoom videos from everyone in that room and treat those as sources in OBS. If those are your sources in OBS, then you can use OBS to flip between the various cameras. She can have title cards, have audio, mix her sound, all of that kind of stuff in OBS and send that out to the internet, send that out to the stream. Um, she can uh, uh, she can do all of those different things. So it's, mm -hmm. it's an option. Um, they are, they are completely independent of one another. Her running OB, I could have a very simple camera set up in my room and she could be using OBS or I could be using OBS and she could keep it simple. These are all possibilities and options. If you're doing something that's a live stream directly, like Elizabeth was talking about with the, the cooking competition. If you don't need Zoom at all, if you don't have participants who aren't in your space, don't use Zoom. Stream directly from OBS to wherever you're going and just use OBS to, to manage that camera option, right? Um, or manage the sound that's coming in. It, you don't, Zoom is to talk to different locations at the same time. If you don't need that, don't include it. Um, and, and, Think about what what is the goal? What are the pieces that you need to plug in and have talk to each other? And once you have that challenge defined, oh, I've got people in five locations, including one where I want to have really good camera because that's where the king and queen and there are multiple sets of people in that room. Once you've defined those problems, you can figure out which of these tools in your toolbox you're going to reach for to make it the best presentation court stream possible. And I will also say um, we've got we've got one person who's sort of involved in in some of these streams who has very specifically said, hey, we don't need to be a broadcast company. And she's absolutely right. If if this kind of stuff isn't fun to you, just like everything else in the SCA, don't bother. <laughs> set up a camera, set up your computer, flip the lid up, point it at you, maybe plug a nice set of headphones in your ears so that you can get a microphone that's close to your face and move on with your life. Enjoy the thing that you're doing. Um, I happen to enjoy some of this kind of stuff. It's fun for me. So I get to play with a, a thing that I haven't gotten to play with that much. Um, and I get to serve my my uh, uh, kingdom or barony in doing so. So, you know, it's a win for everybody. So cool. I'm definitely a behind the scenes person, but that's why I'm here because yeah. I don't mind doing those part, but being that person in charge, I'm going to leave that to somebody else. I'll focus on, on the that's fair. side of stuff. 
do what do what brings you joy. Cool. Are there any other questions? Where will you post if you do like Ellen asked and do yeah. a separate OBS? Where where would you post those links? How would you? Um, can I? If I was doing a separate class, if you, so that form that I posted, um, if you want mm -hmm. to uh, stick it in there and click the thing about a uh, uh, mailing list, and if you really just want me to email you about that and nothing else, put it in, in one of the comment boxes. Um, uh, whatever whatever you want to do for that is fine. Uh, and I, I don't have a mailing list currently, it's just if I set one up and people want to receive things, I want to have the option and, and have your preferences recorded. Um, but yeah, if you put if you put your info in there, I will uh, make sure to email back if I'm doing another class. Because I think waiting till the next university is too long. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be out of quarantine by then. All right, that good for you? Good for me. Great. Uh, Lizette, I see your hand is raised. Thank you. Uh, I just had a quick question. I noticed the class was being recorded and unfortunately due to time zone differences, I missed the very beginning of the class. Yep. Uh, where will the recordings be posted? Do you know? Uh, we will post them to probably YouTube. I think Sophia wants to do, I think we said we were doing this one as a public post. Um, so it will be available on YouTube, available to share all that kind of stuff. And we will use the university uh, ability to mail students in a class to uh, let you know that it has been posted. Um, and I think you can log into the university website to see the link as well. We'll put it in there. And if you decide to give me your email address, I will also make sure to uh, uh, put the link in there in an email that I send out to everyone who signs Thank up. You. Absolutely. I, I got to tell you guys, when it comes to videos on University of Atlantia, we have put the onus on the teachers to manage their own materials. And that's cool. Um, what I just put in the chat is my personal link. I'm the deputy for online learning for University of Atlantia. So anything that I can get an excuse to cobble together and compile onto my feed, I will. So anybody that lets me put their stuff up, and I'm pretty sure that this video is probably going to end up there, probably on Marguerite's own personal feed as well, a uh, YouTube channel. And um, there's a, there's no central place yet. We do have virtual Atlantia. If you just Google virtual Atlantia, you will get a number of resources, not the least of which is a central website that our kingdom webmaster has put together. That is where a lot of links are compiled for our kingdom. And this is a quest we are all on right now, trying to compile all those uh, into a, all, all this great resources into one central location. So check out University Atlantia's website, Virtual Atlantia, uh, my channel and Marguerite's channel, and then keep in touch. <laughs> yeah, and Sophia, talk to me about that one. I have ideas. Oh, good. Yeah, we we have a lot of work ahead of us, dear. <laughs> but I want to build some Rails there. apps. <laughs> There are those of us out there that are very appreciative of all the information that you've put up, but made available. So, oh, we're Absolutely. having a good time. All like right. Margaret said we like it because it's fun for us. There's a lot of other people that are like, I just want to cook my dish and maybe send out a handout. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's there's all kinds. So, you know, we're 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 enjoying the geekery. <laughs> yes. And also, Lizette, I see your hand. And oh, I have to ask, where in Antier are you? And did you get snow recently? All the snow. Uh, the snow is above my windowsill. <gasps> oh, uh, are you in? Are, I hate to. I hate to ask. Uh, 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 mundane. But are you in Seattle area? Or? I'm not. Okay. I'm in the I tri area that. in Portland. Okay. And uh, Got it. I have a blue windowsill. But wow. that's not snowing currently. Wow, that's a lot of Jeez. snow there. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, wow. this is a dramatic amount of snow. We normally uh, yeah. don't get more than like a inches? foot. Yeah. And usually it's measured in inches. When I checked right before class, there were drifts well over a foot. I could not get my ruler down deep enough. And uh, this is coming in at mid thigh on me. So yeah. And, and nice. I know that my window is raised or my floor is raised up from the ground outside, so. Wow. Sorry yeah. for the digression, everyone. 
Do you have another question? Uh, I forgot what it was. <laughs> it's all right. Sorry. Sent it right out of your brain. I'm no, a it's, fairy it's away good. from um, Seattle, and it's I'm eight inches here. There's how much there? Eight inches. Wow. Eight inches in Bremerton. Cool. Only because the video is still going and full responsibility, I asked the question. Um, let's keep it to uh, topics, at least while the video is still going. So does anyone else have questions about uh, uh, live streaming, that kind of stuff? Then I can turn off the recording. No? Great. Well, for everyone who participated, uh, I have that form. Uh, excuse me, I did that direct. I did not mean to. Um, I have that link to the Google form in the chat. Please feel free to fill that out. Give us any feedback you would like. Um, it was great. It was awful. The material was too easy. The material was way over my head. Um, why didn't you talk about birds? Whatever you would like. <laughs> um, and uh, we will, uh, if you put an email in there, uh, we will work to get back to you. And please, if you if you do not want to be added to any kind of uh, uh, mass email list if we do more classes or anything like that please definitely feel free to mark that in the uh in the thing i this this form is just going straight into my google drive nowhere else so uh i will i will be very careful and specific with your information i have been a web minister in a previous iteration so i got you cool and with that i am going to stop our stream